Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at an old B-grade Panasonic Tough Book that I bought off of eBay. Now this thing has some problems but hopefully we're going to be able to fix them. And I also want to answer the question whether you should actually buy one of these old Panasonic Tough Books and are they still usable today? Anyway, let's take a look. Inside that chunk of bubble wrap we've got a very poor conditioned laptop. I wouldn't exactly call this a B-grade machine. Immediately, I realized that it's missing the latch and the display is a bit wobbly. This laptop has definitely seen a hard life, which makes sense as that is what these are designed to endure. It honestly seems a bit too light, as if something is missing. Underneath these metal doors are supposed to be the hard disk and battery, both of which are missing. I accidentally won another auction for a very similar B-grade tough book. This one looks like it's actually in much better condition. Not only that, it actually has the hard drive and the battery, which are not cheap to purchase individually. The latch is also present, making it stay closed a whole lot more securely. Taking a look inside, it's far better, but it is definitely in desperate need of a clean. You could say that about most laptops though. The good things don't stop there. It actually turns on. It's got a third generation Core i5 processor, four gigabytes of RAM, a one terabyte hard disk, and it's been running for 5,870 hours. That is 244 days straight. The hard disk has been wiped, so for now, I'll just install Linux before I put a solid state drive in. As described in the eBay listing, several of the keys do not function. We'll have to see whether they can be fixed later in the video. To test the functionality of the incomplete tough book, I simply moved across the battery and hard disk. In this one, none of the keys seem to do anything, not a single one. The screen on these laptops are also incredibly bright. Sadly, I cannot film them at lower brightnesses due to the pulse width modulation. This visual trickery means that the screen is cycling the backlight on and off in rapid succession, leading to the rolling shutter effect you see on screen now. So we've got one laptop with several dead keys and another with the whole keyboard not functioning at all. I'm still hoping to create one good working machine out of the two of them. The cheaper one was $67 and the complete one cost $105. They both have many useful features such as a touchscreen and the ability to fold up like a tablet. There are also watertight covers over the ports and plenty of room for expandability. With over 5,800 hours of use, I can see why this has become pretty dirty. So let's give it a clean and try to make a complete working laptop. To begin the disassembly, I removed the battery, which thankfully still holds a decent charge. To get access to the internal components, a dozen or so screws had to be removed from the base. The metal plate has a watertight seal that runs around the entire perimeter of the laptop. That's what it looks like on the inside. The CPU is passively cooled, meaning no air gets in or out during normal operation. Rubber seals are used pretty much everywhere in an effort to keep out water, dust and dirt. There's even GPS and cellular connectivity. You can put your SIM card in here. Because the internals have no airflow, it is completely dust free inside. There's no real need to take it apart further. The processor uses some very good thermal pads and there's nothing left to clean inside the laptop. The outside on the other hand has quite a lot that needs work. I began by wiping down the outer casing with some eucalyptus oil. Years of gunk and grime have built up on here. A bit of elbow grease is really starting to make a difference. All of this dead skin and grime over the battery door leads me to believe they were switching out batteries pretty frequently. A bit of isopropyl alcohol did wonders to remove it all. The 10.1 inch screen is pretty much perfect. I'd say that suggests that it wasn't used as a touchscreen much or at all. A toothbrush was very effective at getting into the hard to reach places, and you can bet there are plenty of them on this laptop. I've always wanted to own one of these Panasonic Tough Books, however, most of the time the older ones still command a decent amount of money. This particular model in complete working condition normally goes for around 350 Australian dollars. Actually a bargain considering this retailed for close to $5,000 about 8 years ago. The keyboard was also held down with some pretty strong adhesive. Clearly they didn't want it to come out. It also looks like I may have accidentally detached the backlight from the keyboard. Not that that matters though. And under this water resistant flap, we've got the keyboard and backlight connectors. While I had this open, I went through and gave it a good cleaning. Notice the foam that surrounds the display cables as they exit the body of the laptop. To try and flush out any possible corrosion from the keyboard, I bathed it in a shallow bath of isopropyl alcohol. I let this sit for about 15 minutes before draining it off. I also cleaned under the keycaps of the problem keys. We'll have to see whether this had any effect. 
If you remember earlier in the video, the keyboard in the other laptop didn't work at all. I want to find out why, as I may need a spare keyboard for the other laptop. So now we can see why this keyboard was not responding to any inputs. It simply wasn't plugged in at all. But sadly, it's actually one of these really cheap replacement keyboards. But however, it will work in the other laptop, so we can at least have a fully functioning one. After flushing out the faulty keyboard with isopropyl alcohol, as well as taking off the individual keys and getting under the membranes, they still didn't work, which is kind of disappointing as a proper, really good quality replacement keyboard is about $100 Australian, and that's more than I paid for either one of these units. So I think what we're going to have to do is put the cheap replacement keyboard in the good working Toughbook and just live with that. Until I can source a working backlit keyboard, the cheap replacement one will work, so I'll use it for now. I'm also putting in a second stick of DDR3 memory, bringing the system total to 8GB. The one terabyte hard disk was well protected inside this caddy. There's plenty of foam to cushion a drop, and what looks to be a fuse with a 115 degree cutoff. My guess would be it stops the hard disk from running when it detects an extreme amount of heat. In place of the original hard disk, I'm putting a cheap Kingston A400 SSD, which will generally make the laptop feel a lot more zippy. This can be slid back in and will be done. I ended up installing Windows 10, but what I really want to know is just how durable these Panasonic Toughbooks are. Using the one that was in worse condition, I thought I would find out. I generally wouldn't recommend hosing down your laptop. Not after letting it dry out in the sun, I put the SSD from the other machine in here and it still worked. I wonder what I should try next. Sometimes you may leave your laptop sitting in the driveway. Well, how does one of these fare getting run over? Surprisingly, the hinge is just as solid as before. And when powered on, it once again still works fine. What if you dropped your laptop off a ladder onto concrete? Again, and again, and again. Those are some solid hits against the ground. Most of the corners are now dented inward, which I guess isn't too surprising. The hinge hasn't gotten any worse, and when powered on, it still works. These really do live up to the Toughbook name. What if you're a fan of golf though? A hard impact on the base looks like it did a serious amount of damage. We'll do one more for good measure. The hard hits have broken through the metal body, denting it pretty hard. The front panel is also not looking very good. Trying to power it up results in no signs of life. And opening it up, I can see that I managed to bend the Wi-Fi card and the motherboard underneath. As a result, it no longer works. So, now that we know it's best not to hit these with an axe, what's it like using one? If it wasn't obvious, it's a thick laptop. Panasonic does not waste that space. There are ports and buttons on every side of this laptop. The cheap replacement keyboard experience is not great. It's very cramped, but it does work. The screen is really bright at an impressive 475 nits. Even in direct sunlight, there is next to no glare. The bad part is, color reproduction is very poor. Turning this into a very thick tablet is possible. Using it is also quite fun. The low resolution screen means watching video isn't very good though. Some light gaming was perfectly fine. In Minecraft, it was getting above 50 frames per second. This is likely helped by the low resolution of the display. The Intel HD 4000 graphics also had no trouble playing old school RuneScape. In Cinebench R20, it ended up scoring 579 points. This laptop is not designed to be very powerful, and it has to make performance sacrifices to be dust and water resistant. So, using one of these Panasonic Toughbooks has honestly been pretty crazy. If you're used to thin and light laptops, well, this probably isn't going to be for you. But if you value durability, weather sealing, and really good viewing in direct sunlight, then maybe this is one for you. And don't let that 10.1 inch screen fool you, this thing is pretty big, especially when it comes to thickness and overall heft. Uh, I had a lot of fun messing around with this laptop, and I'll probably keep it and <laughs> take it to a coffee shop in the future, and that'll confuse a few people who've probably never seen one of these. But in saying that, finding spare parts for these are actually pretty expensive because there probably aren't that many of these around. But if you do find one of these in complete working condition, you're probably going to be paying a few hundred bucks. I paid just over 100 for this better, uh, better condition one, and about 60 bucks for the one that was in much worse condition. But anyway, had a lot of fun making this video, and I hope you appreciated me 
trying to destroy the other one of these laptops. I, it sort of killed me inside doing that. Anyway, if you like this video, feel free to leave a like. And if you want to see more, definitely consider subscribing. I'll see you in the next video.